Hello and welcome. My name is Maria Klyovkov and we are now in um, week four of the Sacred Six. So the Sacred Six is all about the six weeks of gratitude between Canadian Thanksgiving and U.S. Thanksgiving. And what's really interesting about the six weeks of gratitude is when we're in a grief journey, sometimes we don't feel like there's anything to be grateful for. But this particular time in the grief journey, this particular week is so important because this is the week where we celebrate All Hallows Eve, Halloween, All Hallows Eve. It's the week where we celebrate All Saints Day and All Souls Day. It's going to end um, next week when we go to Remembrance Day and, um, and Veterans Day. It's the time where we truly honor our ancestors. We honor those people on whose lives our lives build. And so often this time period is referred to as a time where there's a thinning of the veil. Regardless of your religious beliefs of afterlife or what happens after we die, there is this idea that the souls of our loved ones are on the other side of a veil and that that veil quite often is thick and we can't see or feel them, but there are times where there is a thinning of the veil. Uh, people believe that in sunrise, in sunset, those are thinning of the veils time. Also that there are locations, there are sacred locations on the planet where you can experience and feel a thinning of the veil. All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, this is a time period where many faiths, many countries around the world recognize a thinning of the veil. I particularly love the celebrations that involve light during this time period, because of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're now going to a dark time, which is a time for introspection. It's when the sun isn't out as much, and so we are being invited to look inward and to inhabit the dark a little bit. But what happens in many cultures is there's a parade of light that happens where we bring light to the cemeteries. And often these parades end up in the cemeteries where family members then bring their candles and they're lighting the stones around their ancestrals, uh, ancestral um, uh, grave sites. And it's a time to share stories about your loved one. It's a time where they get to live through this time period. They get to come back to life even through this time period, through the memories Healthy mourning is about being willing to share the stories of our loved ones who passed. It's about recognizing that our ancestors are very much a part of our lives every day and that we can honor them and love them. And when we do learn how to honor them, we are freed to live our best lives. If you are struggling at all with grief and with not really knowing how to convert your grief to mourning, because when you do, what you experience is that your grief symptoms soften over time. If we instead push away our grief, the grief symptoms harden over time and that becomes buried in carried grief. But if you're curious about how do we grieve and how do we mourn in healthy ways, then I encourage you to come and visit us at healthymorning.com. That's healthymorning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G.com. There you're going to see links to all kinds of programs that we run. Our flagship program is, of course, the HMR program, which is the Healthy Morning Revolution program. We're all about revolutionizing the way we all think about grief and mourning where we do embrace our ancestors and we find ways to honor our ancestors, not just at these sacred moments of All, 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 All Hallows' Eve and All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day, but beyond that with our everyday life. In the book, Healthy Morning, Happy Loving, 52 Ways to Convert Your Grief to Morning with Ease and Grace, um, it's all about learning how to do that, how to convert your grief to mourning and how to do that with ease and grace. The HMR program are the people who choose to journey with me. And once a week we meet and we talk about a different conversion technique every week. And I invite you to explore that program um, during the fall. We have specials on that program. So if you're watching this during the fall, please click on the link below and see what the fall special is this year. The other thing I would invite you to do is to find the other programs that are right for you. I personally am, an, am a womb twin, and I was asked today 
about this time period of the thinning of the veil. And for womb twins, if this is a good time to connect with your twin, and I would say to you as a womb twin, anytime you feel called to connect to your twin is a good time to do it. The thing about womb twins is we tend to live in the space of uh, thin veil. Because we walk so closely and connected to our twin, whether we know it or not, Sometimes we, we find it hard to relate to others in this world because we are walking in the thin veil world. And so we do, we, Olga and myself, Olga is the Irish representative to Womb Twin Worldwide and I'm the Canadian rep. Um, we meet weekly on the Womb Twin chat and we invite Womb Twins to join us in the Womb Twin chat. Quarterly, we have free introductions to the Womb Twin, Twin chat so that you can see what that's like. So if that speaks to you, please go to healthymorning.com and click on the womb twin link, and then you will see our next uh, introductory session and um, how to join us in the womb twin chats on Wednesdays. The point of this is none of us are meant to journey grief alone. None of us are meant to do a grief journey where it's a struggle. We're actually meant to find the sacred in the grief journey and do that in community so that we really can do that journey with ease and grace. I hope that I can be of support to you. Come visit us in the website. And in the meantime, for this week, I'm wishing you much ease and much grace in your grief journey. And I'm wishing for this week that we all remember and honor our ancestors and we find ways to do that that are meaningful to us. Much love to you all. Namaste.